Hello and welcome to Everything to Guppy, the podcast where we talk about every single item, every single enemy, every single everything in the Binding of Isaac. I'm William Hughes, and I'm joined as always by your Boxing Day buddy, Gary Butterfield. It's me. It's Boxing Day buddy. Technically, it's a day after Boxing Day, I think. Boxing, Boxing Day. But, 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 Boxing Helena Day. Boxing Helena Day. It's always Boxing Helena Day at my house. Yeah, because of um, your uh, your your firm stance on dismemberment. Yeah, and that's my dismemberment plan. Yeah, the, that's a band. Uh, it is a band. Good, What's their best song? Pickup. What's their best song? Ooh, a uh, gyroscope. Give me hit, hit me with a little bit of it. Uh, if you spin fast enough, you may be the build of pieces of your heart. Sounds like a bad band. Together, man. But when... I'm uh, I'm not singing good. Seems like they don't sing good in that band. Yeah, they don't. Uh, they have sore throats. Yeah, we should. Uh, We're the sore throat band. Let's place this on the timeline. Uh, it is like forty-eight hours after. Wait, hold, hold up. Wait, let me, let's let's place this on the timeline, but only in terms of things that are going to happen. Oh. Sure. So this we're recording this about well about two hours before Elon explains uh, that actually it was all part of his plan that people voted that they hate him. Yes, it's uh, Gary, your Gary, imagine, him strength, Gary. I, now yeah. I never know where you're at on the various fucking Twitter dramas of the day. I love it. It makes me more slippery. Yeah, uh, I know about this one because uh, I think it was referenced in the Slack. So you, I think you, have I saw it in the... you have to cut all connections, man. <laughs> the, 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 uh, just just uh, just me and Liv. That's healthy, right? It's healthier um, than being connected to the Internet. That's actually true. Yeah, probably. Um, we are about two hours before that. But you were saying before, what are we 48 hours after? Oh, Duckstream. Duckstream, baby. Uh, as our uh, aging bodies attempt to rebuild themselves after the monumental stresses of two 12 hour periods of sitting on a couch. Yes. But, but uh, also standing up to get snacks. Yes. And, uh, peeing, talking, peeing sometimes. I peed a few times. Did you shit? At I Nick's? can't tell if I peed the right amount. No, I don't shit at Nick's. He's got a tiny toilet. I, it is, it is, it We're is too big it, for Nick's toilet. It's it, true. You as, look at it. You're as, like, it's going to snap like, under my prodigious bulk. Yeah. If you and I both tried to take a double shit on that, like we would, hit, we would owe Nick a new toilet and like a plumber and all kinds of stuff. And all I'm trying to do in this life, Gary, is get out of it without owing anybody a toilet. Yeah, I like to. I'm responsible for my own toilets. That's what my dad taught me. A man's responsible for his own toilet. Yeah, we're we're two years straight on duck streaming from Nick's place, and I don't think I shit either time. And I'm a you know I'm no. a pro, I'm a prodigious shitter. You are. You're fucking in that way. I think my body just knows not to fuck around with this. Yeah, I. Uh, when I am under any amount of stress, my body says, hey, don't shit. Yeah, and it sucks because as, as an anxiety sufferer, it means that I, uh, a lot of times my body is sending uh, it's not safe signals Well, because the old butt. Gary, that's ancestral because our, our, you know, our forebearers mostly died while shitting. It's very vulnerable. It's why cats will go into the bathroom with you. They want to watch to keep an eye on you because you're part of their clouder. Or um, if you die so that they can get yeah. first taste on the face jerky. Oh, I, I imagine that a cat might feel a little bit weird about eating you while you still have shit hanging out of your ass, even if they're eating your face. Yeah, they're they're real. Uh, I've watched my cats eat probably at this point a full gallon of their own vomit. So I'm not sure that they're <laughs> the, necessarily uh, the gourmands you're portraying them as. Oh, they're uh, little ratatou- little catatouis. Little little catatouis. Yeah. The uh, yeah. Uh, so anyway, so we're diminished. And we're still going to record, uh, so because yeah. we're going to go travel, and because the next week is the holiday, and stuff. This um, week is the holiday, Gary. It's, it's this coming week out is the on the twenty seventh. Yes, indeed. You're right. Uh, so yeah, so we're recording. Father Christmas has already come and left his dark bounty. And he's blessed us with his load. Father Christmas, give us that's some a great song. Money. We little trivia from Duckstream. That's what Modred was going to learn, but we didn't have time. That's a hard song. Yeah. Uh, where so we chose like the easiest song in the world. Um, Motor just did great from what I heard while making polite conversation, like a real person. Thank you, thank you. It's like a it's like being at a concert, uh, but you can talk to each other. Unlike most concerts where you just stare. I did spend most of the time. We spent most of the time talking about concerts we've been to. I talked about the Ratatat show you and I went to. Nice. That was a great time. It was. I, I remember that very fondly. Um, of course, we're talking about Empty Heart today. Yeah. 
Uh, we're two empty men talking about our empty yep. hearts. My heart is full. The rest of my body is empty, though. It's creating a real rattling, like, spray can situation. And that's the way that Gary me. and I are different. Gary, could you real quick... So, uh, right, let's go off of the assumption that we raised about $20,000 this weekend, right? For yeah. Transactive Gender Project. Tight. How much How much of that would you like to personally credit to me? Ooh. I. You know what, Will? I'm going to say something nice here in a second. Ugh. You're not going to like it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're really popular on those streams. Your uh, crew comes through so your streaming crew like all of our guppy sickos come through it is very obvious that they have a very intense will fandom even though it does portray uh as like this mild antagonism between the two of you sure. they show up and they show up like both in chat and financially which i think you can take a lot of credit for yeah gary i i think you can literally like guppy is the show i think that most speaks to the most diehard listeners with the least to do in their lives yeah yeah, it's uh, for it's for dedicated. Yeah, real dedicated folks. Well, that's the nice way to say it. But Gary, I'm waiting to hear that number. Oh, um, well, so that's tricky. So overnight, our shift raised like something like six thousand okay. of that. Uh, you know, that happened while we were recording. Of which, so I'm half, give of the, you... half of that has to go to Nick right off the top, right? Nick gets yes. his cut right off the top before Absolutely. before we do any of the funny things and wonderful things Nick did. Nick gets half that just for the for his just for setup, work. yeah, and 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 having the uh, the house doing and, and then I th- doing the actual work during the yeah stream. yeah absolutely. Uh, I'm the gonna give myself of times a lot of the grown men and Gwen were like Nick. We the it was did a thing. it was a real nonstop uh, <laughs> daddy need need help. Nick, I we, moved the mouse. Yeah. Oh. Nick, Nick, I lost the lid to my yogurt. I'm not hungry anymore. What do I do? <laughs> Um, yeah. So, and I'm gonna give myself a big chunk of that right off the top, just for setting up the event in the first place. Interesting. Wouldn't be here without Gary. Sure. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> was my idea. Um, the uh, so give it, give that to me, and then Cole gets a you know like 49 percent of that as well. Wait, Cole um, gets a cut of our half. Uh, oh, I guess that's true. No, cor- correct. Thank you for keeping me honest here. I, yeah. I didn't diminish man. Uh, thank you for keeping me mean. <laughs> yeah, idea about this. So if Nick gets half for three thousand, I get like another well, like just a, a founders. Nick, yeah, I was gonna say Nick gets at least half. Yeah, yeah, at okay. least half. Oh, th- this is before his performance. Sure. Uh, founders fee for me, I'm gonna give myself like ten uh, percent residuals for eternity. Okay, uh, that I just kind of granted. You know, so six hundred. That's before I do any kind and of And I want to be very, 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 very clear. We're talking about credit. All this money goes to Transactive Gender Project. Don't get oh. it in any way, shape. <laughs> like, we're talking about this in a in a funny way. I want to go back and be very clear. All what the money is twist. going to share. Yeah, what a grift. What a twist that would be after, like, I mean, we have to we put it in the time. After doing this for 10 years, we do start getting the money. <laughs> um, just, start, it's, just start getting emails from Jen from Transactive, like, uh, hmm. didn't, didn't get the check this year? Yeah. So, so some loan forgiveness program kind of stuff. So give, I'm going to give myself 10% in perpetuity from okay. our share for setting it up. Um, then I'm going to say... So that's uh, 3600 off of the 6000 right there. Yeah. So 2400 left. Uh, is that correct? Yeah. Math-wise? Yeah. Great. Yeah. It'd be great. Two, thank you. Thank you. 2400 left. Uh, between that, in terms of performance on Mike, I feel like you and I were more often... Uh, just on the couch bantering. Uh, we got to factor off. in Gwen's travel costs though. And Gwen was great. I think Gwen gets half that, half that performance bonus just for the traveling and for her amazing contributions. She did a PowerPoint. She did do a PowerPoint. I was going to get into individual bits. Okay. Uh, that people brought, uh, I, we all brought it with individual bits, I think because Nick did karaoke, mm-hmm. set that up. That was great. You did a patina of facts throughout. It's great. You brought a system. I guess. Uh, you know, had additional setup time. Gwen did a PowerPoint. I did a cooking show. Uh, these were all, I think we all did great stuff. Gwen does get some travel bonus, I would say. Um, so it would be like 600 each at this point if we were splitting. Okay. Uh, I'm going to give Gwen a little bit more. Yeah, please. For the travel bonus. So 700. And for being funnier than me. Well, no, we're not there yet. Okay. Like I'm taking this premise seriously. I'm so, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, sorry. And but I think there, there's some additional bonus that you and I get out of that remainder again for just holding down the fort a lot. Like keeping in mind, like Nick definitely did more, but Nick took half already. This is already Nick's running the event technically is already accounted for. Okay. 
So us just being on the couch, like filling dead air, dead air is bad. Yes. You could argue that it matters what we filled it with, but I think it, you can only to a degree. Gary, can I give you some, a note? Some, yeah. Bit's getting a little boring. Will, you asked me a question. I know. And part of my curse is that I take things seriously, and I you know. know this, my friend. Can't we just say <laughs> I, I got a hundred? I or I was responsible for a hundred dollars of it that I donated, and no. that's it. No, 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 no. I was going to give you less than the the, yeah, <laughs> the split okay. between the three, Good. but a little bit extra. Okay. Because one, you you were there. Uh, I'll just cut to the end. You're going to get a little bit less for the joke, but yeah. a little bit more than you expect because of loyal Will fans. Uh, and because you and I spent a lot of time on the couch just bantering. Okay, but the couch cleaning fee does have to come out of that. You sharted. Well, I just, uh, I, just that... I, I did shart. No one's saying I didn't shart. But between you yep. and me, I don't know who put more back sweat into that baby. The, uh, well, yeah, and it was kind of like a back shart when I did it. <laughs> the, the, um, you did scrunch which... your shoulders and then go, Ugh. ooh. It, usually I use my back shart to win a jet ski race. Like the last minute? Yeah, because your boost meter gets filled. Yeah, it's it, it is my boost meter. It's nitro is what I like to call it. So that's how I usually, it's like a H, hydro H2O kind of thing. Um, but it had nowhere to go. You know, I didn't want to get plugged up. Did hydro H2O so. take all of its n- nouns from the American Gladiators? Ooh, I don't think there's a, a gladiator named H2O. I think there was one. Wasn't there one named Hydro? There's a hydro, yeah. There's and then there's ice. I bet they they have fun. There's probably ice and nitro, obviously. Blaze, nitro, power, power, power is a great American gladiator name. One of them should have been named Steve, strong, uh, Russell. Those are good too. But I like the idea of just one person who just didn't want to like. I'm so strong. I don't need very to confident. pick a funny name. I'm Davis. Yeah, Mac. I'm Fred. Fred it would be Arms. really powerful. Fred it was Arms. like a non, non very strong name. Like I'm Chansey or Chauncey. <laughs> if it was I, Chansey, I, that's very different. Yeah. Uh, maybe yeah, I'll I'm tackle Chauncey. you. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll heal you. Uh, <laughs> maybe Chauncey. I'll throw a potion at you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll throw an egg from my body at you. Um, but yeah, like Chauncey. I'm Reginald. Those shows should incorporate more magic bullshit. American Gladiators? Yeah, or American yeah. Ninja Warrior, which is in some ways its descendant. It's very much its descendant. The um, what if you yeah. were like going along the the top bars in American Ninja Warrior, yep. and you could just smoke bomb? That'd be pretty cool. I think there should be more ninja magic in general in American Ninja Warrior. Yeah, leave behind some decoys like Naruto. Yeah, yeah, decoys or you, and you kite fly across things. Do you they don't do most of the cool ninja stuff. Yeah. In that do you show. think anyone's worn a Naruto headband on American Ninja Warrior? Uh, Almost guarantee they have. Almost guarantee, yeah. Yeah. Of course, we're talking about empty heart. Yeah. Uh, this is pretty today. straightforward. If Isaac has one red heart or less at the beginning of a floor, an empty heart container is added. Yes. Forever, I thought I understood this item, and I thought you just had to have at least one empty heart. Uh-huh. So I thought it didn't work. Uh, <laughs> no. No, you have, to have, you have to be down to just one red heart. So I was just like, God, what the fuck does that do? Like, I would pick it up thinking it was more powerful than it was. Uh, so this is a treasure room item that can also pop out of the devil beggar pool. Uh, you beat yep. the beast as Samson. Uh, this is not a, so. This is quality one, and it and it shows. It, there's some interesting stuff you can kind of do with it. Uh, like you're incentivized to get yourself down to one red heart to basically get a health up. Yeah. Well, the the basic the idea here is to uh, keep you in devil deals throughout the run to not leave you in the situation where you don't have any red hearts to buy devil deals with. Yeah, but you ha- you're also going to be very close to death to make that work. Unless you're running so. with soul hearts. True. Or does this not work if you have soul hearts? Uh, no, I think you can have soul hearts Okay, with it. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah, that's basically the idea. Uh, a lot of times you're going to get this when you have multiple hearts and it's just going to kind of suck. Yeah, it's just, enough, it's just nothing. It's just nothing. Quality one, baby. Take, take some more double uh, deals. It's a real bummer. This uh, this week gets more powerful. The next item is more powerful, but kind of confusing. Mm-hmm. And then we get to like the most broken item added in Repentance. Over 9,000. Uh, yes, it is. <laughs> you okay, man? It is indeed over 9,000. <laughs> you, you okay, man? I'm worried about you at this exact moment. <laughs> 
worried about you. What, what a weird thing to just say when something's good. Like just because <laughs> the power Over levels 9, are like 000. increasing. Like in like in Dragon well, Ball Z. I, th- yeah. Or like our like our gentle ramp. Or like anything that goes up. <laughs> like you Dragon Ball Z cannot have things that go up the same way you can't have lasers. It's too general. But it that's what makes it a foundational text. It came out in the eighties. Lasers were before that. Ramps were before that. There's literature. There's a whole world of movies and stuff. Yeah, you mean the Dragon Ball manga? No. <laughs> when did uh, that start? Uh, Gary, uh, as well. I don't know. If uh, people enjoy the show, what should they do? I, um, uh, come on, man. We got to <laughs> get a Patreon. We at least have to be able to steer out of the pivots. I know. I just this is one of the first times you've asked me that question where I had like no real good answer. <laughs> Um, go to patreon.com slash duckfeedtv. Give us some dollars. Uh, anything you have left over that you didn't donate to Duckstream. And then uh, go to ratings reviews on Apple Podcasts or Podcast Addict and leave them. Yeah. Uh, first, check whether uh, donations are still open for Duckstream. They might be. Probably yes. not. Probably not this late. But you can also just, you know, no. give money to Transactive. Yeah. Yes. Or other charities as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah. Uh, leave a rating and review like this one left on Podcast Addict by Patrick. This is a podcast? Five stars. No, oh, thank you, Patrick. Short and sweet. Yeah, and it is, technically. Yeah, it comes out. Uh, no ghost. No ghost. Hello and welcome to Everything to Guppy, the Binding of Isaac podcast that talks about every item, trinket, character, and boss in the Binding of Isaac series of video games. My name is Gary Butterfield, and with me as always, as also, (laughs) is the man who chooses not to date Ghost because he loves to practice astral rejection, Will Hughes. Gary, a long walk, but I enjoyed the exercise. Thank you. I uh, I needed to make sure, since my throat's so scratchy and sore, I need to make sure I talked as much as possible. Yeah, uh... Let's let's be clear. We've used our instruments. Our instruments, they're they're all do guitars get used up, Gary? They uh they get worn. Yeah, you can maintain them, but if you don't do anything, they do get used up. Yeah, if you just kind of assume that sleeping for like 2 days straight will clean them. We'll we'll fix them. Yeah. Guitars spend most of their time sleeping. Uh it doesn't fix them. Oh, that's weird, so. Gary, cuz mine mostly is uh gently weeping. Is we- gently weeping. Mine cries in huge rock and jags. And ripping jags Where of tears. Gary, question never addressed by the song. Where do the tears come out? Ooh, great question. Um, probably out of like the the fretboard. You know, they have those little dots. There's probably two of them next to each other that are, that are eyes. Okay, it's not just like a big teardrop coming out of the the hole. When you say hole, do you mean the thing you plug an ant like a cord into? No, I'm thinking of an acoustic guitar, Gary. So the oh. Little hole. Oh, that song's played on electric. That guitar doesn't. Acoustic what? guitars don't weep. Oh, they do I, was talking, I was talking about an acoustic cover of it, though. Oh, got you. Got you. Got you. Uh, that would be if it was just one big eye, like a big cyclops. Yeah. There. Uh, and Ooh, just and, then, and watching the tear fall down through the strings. Yeah. Yeah. Lissandro. I bet. I bet. I, I bet. Yeah. Busters has done that. We should check in with those guys. They're a duo as well. They probably like us. Gary, I, I got to warn you right now. I, I have Mythbusters on the mind because I was just listening to latest My Brother, My Brother, Me, and they did a Mythbusters Uh-oh. riff. 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 Uh-oh. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, Sorry. Steer I'm, out. Steer out. The osmos- okay. the, I'm in full osmosis mode. Osmosis I've also Jones. just been like watching a lot of Rick and Morty. So, Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, challenge mode. Um, it's a good show. Till, yeah. like, I got to season four. It gets pretty rough. Yeah. Like it's not, yeah, I re- yeah. the The worst episode I've seen is also the one with a bunch of Elon Musk in it. So that's exciting. Uh, it's real weird that people decide to invite him to stuff. He he plays Elon Tusk, an Elon Musk uh, from a world where Elon Musk has tusks, and in Elon Musk from the Kevin Smith extended universe. Uh, good good pull. VS uh, universe, and then it's not just a cameo. He's in all of the back half of the episode. It's very bad. Uh, I wouldn't watch that with your eyes, my friend. <laughs> like I, uh, there's, n- you could not pay me. Overall, very funny show yeah. though. I'm, ho- I- I've heard that it gets that season four is kind of dire, and then it gets better again. Yeah. Shout out to Zach. It- Shout out to to our friend Zach. Hey Zach, how's it going, buddy? Um, 
yeah, shout out to Zach, our bud. I I liked the first two seasons of, of Rick and Morty, but I started feeling like not liking the meanness of it. And it kind of just once I got in my head, I couldn't get it out. That is what like I, season three, I think, rides that really well. And then season four, I think it kind of falls into despair. It, it, it is contextually uh, one of Justin Roiland's like best friends who worked on the show died between season three and season four, I think. And uh, uh, it kind of comes through. I think that what happened was I lost all sympathy for the person who acts in every way as if they think they are smarter and better than everyone else, but is secretly sad. Yeah. Uh, that ceased to be a thing that I could have sympathy for. I was like, no, you, you get out of that, Rick. You're real old. You should have fixed this. Yeah, Gary, can now. we move off of subtweeting me and talk about the item? <laughs> Not subtweeting you. That's what I think about Rick Sanchez. But yeah, we can move on. But that's also again. me. No, you have a secret heart of gold. I, so Don't does Rick. anyone take it from you. So does Rick. Eventually. <laughs> yeah, everything's I could tell you. I had your heart of gold clocked when I first met you. Sorry, Gary. I'm a great I'm judge just, of character. I'm just naming Stephen King short stories now. Everything eventual. Oh, the Walk. The Walk is a novella, um, not a short story. Get your fucking facts straight. Also, no. it's a Bachman book, not tech, not a King. <laughs> well, that I'm not going to grant you that. The Bach, um, Gary. The Bachman books have a very different tone and tenor than the Stephen King they're, novels. They're written of the by the same period. person in a different like, mindset. Are you not that familiar? <laughs> Are you not familiar? Are we? Well, we record this show in different mindsets every week we do it. Mm-hmm, but we don't use pseudonyms. Gary, are you not familiar well, with the quote I'm from not... the, the beloved crime writer Donald Westlake, who was also Richard um, Stark, who wrote the Parker crime novels, which are much darker and more uh, <laughs> stark, who once said, uh, when the sun's out, I write as myself. I'm Stark when it rains. What an asshole. No, he's good. Uh, like, he's good and they're good. Like, what an asshole thing to say. If somebody said that to me in real life, I'd punch him. <laughs> no, like, don't punch Donald Westlake. Okay, the crow. No. Like, okay, Eric Draven. Um, it's not funnier because you know the crow's name. It's a little funnier. Yeah, go go back to Poetry Club. Ding dong. <laughs> he's a um, very beloved crime writer. Huh, he's not beloved by me. He said a real shitty thing. It's not, it's he not also real said that 9-11 didn't happen. Yeah. So I, I, yeah, I read that recently. Yeah. And that's weird. That's rare because most people don't say that it didn't happen at all, but he said it didn't even happen. We just went from 10 to 12. Gary, do you think 9-11 would have happened if it had been raining that morning? Ooh, great question. No, it's not. Um, <laughs> the, 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 uh, yeah, you're right. Sorry. I was just trying to make you feel better. Yeah, I appreciate the, um, it. What's astral projection do? I've never had this item. Uh, uh, it, uh, <laughs> Let me clear you, uh, my throat and brain. <laughs> the, um, when you take damage uh, in a room that hasn't has enemies in it, uh, the first time it's time stops for two seconds, and you become a ghost that is uh, has flight and spectral tears, um, and the next hit you take is uh, negated. So it's kind of like a time delay holy mantle. Uh-huh. Like you take the hit, but then you don't take the next hit plus some upside. It's oh. real weird. That is that is weird. It's an interesting idea. It, it gives you flying. So to get flying for a room, all you have to do is take a hit mm-hmm. as long as there are enemies in it. So it allows you to get all the, the flying benefit, you know, which is cool. Uh, it's kind of one of the best, like, you have to take a hit items. Um, yeah, like you're, I mean, ti- the, the, the hit yeah. mitigation makes that makes that the case, certainly. Yeah, you don't go into to hit deduct. So it still fucks with your deal with the devil chance. But you still get a, a free hit out of it. Like if you're fighting a boss with this, you're going to get this two second period of time freezing with increased tears to get some damage in. You're not losing a hit and you're getting flight and spectral tears. So it's generally upside. It's just kind of like a long walk to it. Yeah. And that's and this is one of our, our famous everything to guppy conceptual episodes where we have tried via this episode to convey the experience of having this item. Yes. Kind of long, it was a long walk. and meandering and like to some benefit. Ultimately, probably worth it. But like barely. I've got a uh, a real uh, Wikipedia said it worse thing here. When you pick this up, it says the true out of body experience. And the wiki says in the trivia, the item description is referenced to the guillotine. Uh, oh, it means the guillotine item. Yeah. Never mind. I was like, that has nothing to do with the guillotine. Well, a little bit. A guillotine is an out-of-body experience. It's the only way you're ever going to be able to see the inside of your own neck. 
Someone what, guillotine, okay. Someone guillotines you, holds the head up very fast, and points you at your neck. What do you? Let's say uh, you're getting your head cut off. Oh. Okay. Yeah, um, I, I deserve it. People finally. And let's say, out. let's say I'm there. Uh, what do you want me to do with your head the moment it comes off? You you have like just a a little bit of a second where you might have some consciousness. Uh, the jury's out on that. What do you want me to do with your head, Gary? Uh, all of this is modified by the fact that I consider you a bumbler in tense situ- situations. <laughs> I would be very stressed out with this situation. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> I I, would... like, if I was talking to someone who I trusted to do something smooth and precise, I'd be like, what would, like, what would you have him do? Like, either dunk drop it, either do some, drop kick do some it. sleight of hand. Okay. I can or, drop kick it. I, Gary, the, the chances of you biffing it. Are so high in that you, moment. And I you don't... have no idea how how feared I was in kickball in school. I am pretty good at drop kicking things, <laughs> so and weird. I would practice a lot. If you put me, if you trusted me with this honor, yeah. I would spend a lot of time prepping. Gary, I've spent too much of my life over the last few years trapped in feelings of disappointed pity for you for it to be the last thing I experience on this fucking planet. Here's the thing. I think I can sex- successfully drop kick it, <laughs> but you would so- want to be, you would, <laughs> listen, listen to me. You'd want your face facing forward so you could fly, but I would probably end up kicking you in the face <laughs> on accident. You'd spend your last seconds wincing in pain. Uh, I, I, I think I might have I another- think I would successfully drop kick the head but i don't think i could aim it correctly okay yeah and the other thing was of course uh get my mouth on my own dick that'd be amazing like uh that was going to be my answer yeah or like like a famous like person you ordinarily wouldn't be able to eat out like i would have said the queen before she died but like i don't know kathy bates like why, why is, probably just a, why is kathy yeah. bates at my execution <laughs> It is my execution. I'd switched over to me. Oh, I and, I, and it's the, because I killed uh, several of her family members. <laughs> yeah, duh. Um, uh, if you like this show, what should they do, Will? God, that's a hard. Passing so- over to you because I forgot yeah, how to say the. That's things. a hard social ask. Like I know, Miss Bates. I know you hate this man. He's he's hurt you so much. He did have a last yeah. request. He had a final he, wish, he, and honestly, and, he's getting and, punished. And a last meal. Yeah. <laughs> Hasn't he been through enough, Ms. Bates? <laughs> Hasn't this man who murdered all of your sons been through enough? He's getting his head cut off and you get to watch. The least you could do is throw him a pity fuck. Um, uh, if people enjoy the show, they can go to patreon.com slash duckfeed TV and uh, support the network. Uh, come join the Slack. I've had multiple people tell me recently, like, I haven't been in the Slack because Will said not to. Uh, yeah, it's you, actually, you're uh, your counter programming that you you do against the network is something we've been meaning to bring up. Sure. Meaningful. Well, I don't not against the network, against the Slack. Well, the Slack is a, a big part of the network. Uh, there are other channels in, other than the Guppy channel. Yeah, but that, I, I'm only in the one. I know. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> and then uh, you can also yeah. leave a ratings. In- that just just switch it so you're saying I'm only in the one. Like that will sell it. Sure, I'm in that one channel, uh, and that, so easy to avoid. I'm very easy to so avoid. easy to avoid. Don't at me in the Slack. Don't fucking at me if you <laughs> post some writing I did in games or whatever. Don't fucking just ignore at me. Will. Join the Slack. The Slack is good. Will has been lying to you this whole time. Just ignore him though. In the Slack. And ratings that- and reviews. Yeah, it's good. Uh, yes. for, like this one left on podcast addict by Dave Coulier. <laughs> oh no while it was safe to assume the dragon ball z super android 16 <laughs> was a compilation of episodes it was actually an original story i don't remember much except i may or may not have busted right when goku got punched in the dick great podcast by the way thanks uh thanks dave thanks dave thanks dave sounds like we have some uh, world that's a world gary you can't Particular. you can't gary why can't i you can and i can't no ghosts why? It's one of my strongest impersonations. Um. Oh, this is yes. You. It's me. Sorry. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you actually a little heated on that one, buddy. Just... No, I just why are you so mean about my Dave Coulier impersonation? <laughs> it's a running it's joke. pretty good. It's a running joke at this point. I know, but the energy's so weird today. <laughs> God, I don't. I, I slept so much. How could I want to go back to sleep? <laughs> I just don't want to be awake, but I don't want to be asleep. It's weird. (laughs) 
Hello and welcome to Everything to Guppy, the podcast where we talk about every single item, every single enemy, every single everything in the Binding of Isaac. I'm William Hughes, and I'm joined by a man of no woman born, Gary Butterfield. Yeah. That's right. I just referenced the Scottish podcast. Ooh, the Scottish podcast, uh, Mick Bain. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, I'm going to get you, Mendoza. Uh, I'm, I'm going to get you. Uh, um, <clears throat> the uh, Were you born of a C-section? I was, Gary. Oh, nice. I was plucked untimely from my mother's womb. Correct. I actually awesome. I had, a, I had, a, I had a cord Badass. wrapped around my neck. I was I was uh, breached and had a cord around my neck. So wow, just imagine, man, Gary, real fast. Imagine your life if I died right then. It'd be significantly worse. You're one of my best friends. God damn it, man! Play in the space. I, <laughs> like, I can't play right now. I don't want to be awake. <laughs> I, <laughs> Thanks for listening. I just, I'm trying, man. I'm really doing my best this episode. No, but you, buddy, you're doing great. You're really. You're I'm in a really weird mood, and I don't know how to do things right right now. You're knocking it right out of that fucking park, man. I just. Uh, they've got. Um, they've got. I can't. All their- I can't drop kick your head. I can't eat out <laughs> Kathy Bates. I can't do a Dave Coulier. I can't do anything right. Gary, um, you're, it's getting knocked so far out of the park. They got kids out there trying to like with nets to like stop it from hitting rich people's cars. Little catchers in the eyes. That, that is what the catcher in the rye is about. They never, I don't think he ever Drop says kicking it heads. Way. Yeah. <laughs> to a field. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, yeah. Just, yeah. Weird mood. Yeah. I'm supposed to go to game night tonight, but my stomach won't stop cramping. I might not go. But also, I'm afraid I'll be a real dick because I'm in a real weird mood. I'm not trying to, but I don't know how to interpret people right now. Or say interpret. An Earth Brit. Uh, they should make something if you don't want to be awake but you don't want to be asleep they should come up with a third option it's called death man well they should come up with a fourth option <laughs> okay <laughs> they, <laughs> being high there we go maybe i should get high gary get high i don't get oh high my god right. gary we've got high on a microphone right now well it would take a long time for it to kick in <laughs> it would, you know i would have to do it ahead of time we me and uh brayton recorded an episode of teenage dirtbags high and both of us got high beforehand thinking we'd be like done and ready for bed but uh-huh. it snuck up on us yeah and both of us were real weird on mike and then both of us felt awful about it and then the next episode was a heartfelt apology about both of us getting too high on accident uh so Gary, it's happened before it's not pleasant yeah but like what if you did like a big bong rip Ooh, um i'd cough a lot yeah um, the, uh thing sir cough a lot uh drugs uh, aren't cool don't do drugs yeah uh, or just do them for sleep. Drugs are only good to make you awake or asleep. Like, cause we don't have that third state. Yeah. I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm straight edge, you know, I'm super hardcore straight edge. If you're a real guppy fan, you don't do drugs or drink or feel happy ever. You don't do, um, I consider happiness to be an addictive substance that people should wean themselves off of. Yeah. That good feeling you get for your brain. That's a name is escaping me now. For the like, chemical. Yeah. Serotonin or dopamine. Like, for, there you go. Like, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Does that last? No. Get rid of it. Do not allow yourself to become addicted to happiness. It's like an Immortan Joe thing. It's, I mean, Don't I was. become dependent on water. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was trying to quote Immortan Joe, my hero in the moment. I don't yeah. like his policies towards women, but his policies towards water, I'm real in favor of. <laughs> the, um, we should probably start asking presidential candidates what they think about water. I like to think of myself as kind of a feminist Immortan Joe. Feminist of Morton Joe. Yeah. It's a great character. It's so good. The, uh, like, the, uh, um, Do not allow yourself to be addicted to water, ladies. Do not allow yourself that's, to be addicted to misogyny. That's 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 what I think a feminist is. It's just someone who ends every sentence with <laughs> ladies. 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 Uh, feminists are always talking about ladies. I like the word lady, uh, cause uh, saying female makes me feel like a chud, yeah, you know? Yeah. So if, if I'm referring, I like ladies. Do you like it because it, it almost sounds like labia? I never considered it before, but that's maybe part of it. It does yeah. get me thinking about, la- it doesn't get me thinking about labia. Uh, you can't get me where I'm already at. It's like, you can't stand up once you're already standing. But no, uh, I, I think there are, uh, Gary, I just say people. Oh, it's very enlightened. Gary, we're really having a who can be the biggest dick off right now. Uh, and it's exciting. I, 
It's I don't know what's happening. Miladies. I don't know that I'm here, ladies. <laughs> hey ladies. I'm barely cognizant, ladies. Miladies. Mulaney. We're, um, let's narrow cast John this one Mulaney. just to John Mulaney. Hey, John. <laughs> this is for John. You've had a rough couple of years, buddy. But your episode of doc, your most recent episode of documentary now, fucking funny. Yeah, I think you're probably still very funny, and I would like to see you live. But you charge a lot for your tickets, my buddy. Um, Gary, we maybe expensive. shouldn't be saying this on an episode that's got a week of advance time. <laughs> Oh, Fuck. oh yeah, I guess that's Fuck. true. Who knows what's going on with that guy? He stole Christmas. How many, how many babies will he have in the next week? Um, it's impossible to tell. And some of them might be via C-section. Uh, I, I think I've mentioned this, this line. Good, good segue, but I have, I'm, I've already started talking, so I have to confess the thought. <laughs> sure. Um, I think I've mentioned this before, but he did have a line when he first started doing stand up again after that that went with, uh, this summer I had a baby and went to rehab and reviews were mixed. Yeah, that's <laughs> very funny. The, um, I, I think I was born naturally. I don't think there was a C section for yeah, me. Yeah, you just slid on out of there. I think I did. I think I just like came out fighting. I, I can't remember though. And now who do I ask? The, the, um, Gary, that's a great question. Uh, I mean, we yeah. can try to track. That could be the Gary. That's the pivot when we're done with government items. A true, a true crime <laughs> podcast we, that determines the circumstances of my birth. We track down the doctor who delivered you. Oh, I'd love to meet him. What was I like back then? What did he sense about you? Yeah. What kind of aura did I have, Doc? Yeah. Um, this item is great. This item got heavily nerfed and is still incredible. This is the uh, basically like the mom's knife brimstone they added to repentance. Uh, we're talking about C section, of course. Uh-huh. Um, instead of firing tears, you charge up and shoot out a little fetus that comes out. The fetus just beelines towards an enemy and hangs out on them, doing uh, it used to be a hundred percent of your damage, or maybe a multiplier, but it's been uh, nerfed. Seventy five percent of your damage five times per second. Uh, and you can have tons of them on the screen. Uh, yeah. So uh, the fetuses will automatically fire when Isaac is at full charge. So you can just hold the button down and it'll yes. just keep shooting them out. It's not like chocolate milk where you have to constantly be riding the thing. You just hold the button. You're just going to be constantly firing out a stream of these slower than, than tears, but very, very fast for what they do. Yeah. I'm trying to. I've, I've definitely played with this. I think it was on a daily. I don't know if I've beaten uh, the beast with Lilith, which is the unlock. I think I have. Lilith, it's just Lilith very is a strong. pretty fun, easy character. So. Yeah, I, I love Tainted Lilith. Um, or the, no, just regular the, uh, Lilith. Or is this regular Lilith yeah. that does this one? I couldn't remember. Um, Lilith is tough, I think. But uh, this is worth it. Um, yeah, just really crazy powerful. Uh, this melts bosses because you just get multiple little guys hugging them and hurting them. You yeah, know, they, you don't really have to aim anymore. Yeah. Like it's not, it's again, Brimstone Mom's Life level uh, item. Very hard to lose with this item. Yeah, very powerful. Yep, uh, it's awesome. I wish I, I wish I got it more often. It, it it makes me feel it's like Sacred Heart, like where I'm just like, yeah. This is uh treasure. This is treasure room, but it is quality four, so it's a little bit on the rare side. Gary, I also that maybe that was my Christmas wish is for you to get this item more often. Aw, thank you. We haven't talked about Christmas wishes. Where do they fall in the power level between heaven wishes and hell wishes? Above. Ooh, <laughs> Gary, you can make you a heaven. You can year? make a heaven wish all the time, like. <clears throat> And that makes them more power. Well, I guess. Well, when you die, sure. Or you get, or you can make one all the time, but you only get one heaven wish but when like, you go to heaven. Gary, more people believe in Santa than believe in Jesus. Thinking about that, maybe because everyone who believes in Jesus also believes in Santa, right? No. What do you mean? Uh, tons of people who believe in Jesus don't like Santa. The fuck? Like find the secular parts of Christmas blaspheme i mean you can dislike the secular parts and still like saint nicholas santa is a pretty secular part of christmas i oh i mean if you ask the m&m corporation perhaps or coca m cola but i think we all know that santa is uh, a deeper deep saint nicholas gary come on get your head out of that big old badonk you got i think that saint is just his first name well that no his first name's nicholas what's his last name then uh, Touche. Leibowitz. 
Leibowitz? Twist. Well, that's twist. Well, that's why they don't like him. Uh, oh yeah, the, right, the rising tide <laughs> that's of why a lot of semitism in America. Yeah, that's why a lot of Christians don't like him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you, you fell into my trap. Um. The uh. Yeah. The uh. The good old Santa Claus. I'm Gary. I'm just saying. I think there are more people on on this planet who like who believe in Santa, and that gives the Christmas wish more power. I bet you it's pretty close. I think if you get a Christmas wish once a year. In terms of game balance, it'd have to be less powerful. But the world's not balanced. Gary, the world's not yeah. balanced. Uh, so what no. is your Christmas wish? Ooh, good. Uh, good. Uh, my Christmas wish is to uh, get really good at drop kicking heads. Okay. Uh, I, my, I'm actually going to change mine to get really good at drop kicking Murphy's. Okay. <laughs> the, the, uh... Gotten really into the <laughs> Departed soundtrack this year. Yeah, you, you get your turn, your music agnostic life turning from musicals to like Irish punk bands. And Gary, that's would the be great, a fun twist. That's the great thing about this show is that we can have someone who likes Marvel and someone who likes Martin Scorsese on here. Yeah, I like Martin Scorsese. Then you we can, can have him in one person. No, how? Yeah, how do you reconcile? It's amazing. How do you reconcile? It's amazing. I just don't choose a team. The two parts I of just, you are I, constantly at war. Much like Richard Bachman and Stephen King, uh, whenever I'm reading Marvel comics, I'm one guy. And whenever I'm watching a Martin Scorsese movie, I'm another guy. They're separate personas. Okay. They spell the name Gary differently. All right. So you're kind of uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Mr. Jekyll. It's very similar. Like it's just Gary with an extra R. If I'd had, if you'd let me sit there for another minute in silence, I bet I could have come up with a good Scorsese pun. Take the minute now. Dr. Jekyll. I, oh, Dr. Bickle and Mr. Hyde, the Marvel character, Mr. Hyde. Okay. Because of course, because Travis um, Bickle is the, yes, is the taxi, yeah. is the guy with the taxi driver. Yeah. And the old Mr. Taxi driver. Mr. Hyde is just a, a not very good, is, is Wonder Man's what, brother-in-law or something? I don't remember. He's a, he's a, yeah, he's a pretty middling character. I know Albert Brooks was in. Taxi Driver. I haven't seen that movie in yes, a while. Yes, he is uh, the political operator uh, working for the candidate that Travis Bickle almost assassinates. He works with Civil Shepherd's character. Oh, I, should, I could stand to watch that again. I recently watched Casino and Goodfellas, and they're both awesome. So yeah, I mean, I Taxi time. Driver is, you know, uh, very, 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 very good at evoking a mood. It is... Like, that's a movie that is complicated about how much uh, the movie... Where it falls on on Travis Bickle, mm. I think it's mostly just trying to portray alienation, but it does. It's it, a little too sim. It's a little raw shock. It's like it's a it's a little too much sympathetic and making the the monster look cool. I to some extent, yeah, but I I don't know. This is a thing that's been debated by eight million people uh, for the last forty years. So I think they overall, it's a now. good. It, it's also an extraordinarily masculine movie. Uh, mm -hmm. Like it is about male alienation specifically. So uh, I yeah. have, like not to generalize, but I have never shown it to uh, like uh, a partner or a female friend and had them be like, hell yeah. Yeah. Like uh, I, there's there's value in a male alienation movie if it's not all of the movies. You uh, know, there's also value in the alienation stuff. movies. There's there's tons of value in the alienation movies. They eat they drink rotten milk to get drunk. Yeah. It's great. It's so what, a, what a renewable resource. Can you imagine just aging milk and getting drunk? I mean, milk is just as rotten milk is just as renewable as milk. Yeah, but you could it, it's it's less wasteful. OK, like nothing would go to waste. Well, you know, maybe we just work on getting all the milk drunk. Well, I don't like milk. <laughs> it makes me farty. Do you do you like the taste? Yeah. Yeah. Do you like the make me do you like the nostalgic feeling of uh of do you put it in a bottle like I do? Yeah. And I Get have it. live warm it up on the stove. Oh, gotta be careful. Gotta put it on the wrist. God damn it. I know. I don't want to burn yeah, baby. I gotta tongue. spray spray a little bit on the wrist so I don't want not too hot for Gary. And then maybe, milk fat and, blah, blah, blah. and then maybe maybe uh it do give Gary boom boom and we put and we change. And I give me all boom boom, but then I go to sleep sleep. Oh okay. <laughs> no, buddy, no, gotta change the die dive yeah. before we go to sleep sleep. Huh? Well not if I not if I run around. <laughs> Not if I run away. <laughs> uh oh, uh oh. Gary's a, UCB, Gary's a UCB character now. We got a runner. <laughs> I'm, uh, 
I'm uh, I'm helicoptering my dirty diaper running around the house. Little Donnie and his enormous penis, of which he is unaware. Uh, yeah. Complicated mm-hmm. and unflattering labor practices at their theaters. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's Baby Gary's unflattering labor practices. Don't ask Amy Poehler about it. No. No. Baby Poehler. Um, I don't know how to get out of this. I don't know how to do anything anymore. Baby Polar. It's was, not a good week for that. Gary, Baby Polar was the out. Everyone's too busy laughing okay. to notice how weird that got. We can just transition into the outro. <laughs> it did get pretty weird, everybody. Don't think about it too much. Uh, Patreon.com slash Duck Feed TV. Why you say Nothing it like weird that? about that. Why you say it like Duck that? Feed TV? Duck Feed TV? Sometimes I uh, mix up my emphasize uh, in order to keep speaking me awake. Sometimes I get so bored with what I'm doing that I have to just have fun with words. I'm just having fun with my mouth. Uh, because it's not because I'm bored. It's because I, I don't, uh, I'm broken because I'm diminished highly, highly. I'm trying, I'm not trying to drink a bit. I can't talk right now, man. I'm not tired, but I don't know what's happening. I don't feel good. Uh, uh, and this one from Big Mikey, Big Mike ninety one, another classic Big Mike ninety one podcast addict review. Supercomputer doesn't seem so super to me. And that was five stars. Lovely, lovely, the lovely bones. Thank you, Big Mike. The lovely bones, bones and all. Hello and welcome to Everything to Guppy, the Binding of Isaac uh, podcast you that covers every trinket. This, man. You can do this. <laughs> trinket, I, I have your thank back you for the every step of the way. We got to get through you this, man. I, it, man. The thing that's crazy is I don't know what's going to happen when we end. Like, <laughs> I if I spin fast enough, then maybe. Like, I'm, I'm the gyroscope. Uh, it's a, it covers the, the trinket. Thank you. I was surprised I got it. It covers trinkets, this podcast. Um, and I'm Gary Butterfield. And with me, as always, is uh, Inspector Gadget's daughter exploring the tomb of Tutton Ra, Will Hughes. Hey, Gary. For a second, I think you forgot which show you were doing, and you thought it left a gap for me to say my name. I did. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 100%. I was feeling fairly confident about this when I sat down. Uh-huh. That confidence was unearned. Gary, no. This is great. This has been funny <laughs> and good. And any times where I've suggested otherwise was gaslighting. Well, I, oh, in that case, I encourage you to do more. I, I do think that this will be interesting for people, even if it's not funny. At the very least, they get to see like, oh, this is, you know, this the is a cost. rare glimpse. This is the cost. Yeah. yeah, this is a rare glimpse of just like absolutely diminished boys, you know? And and if anything, that's very damning to what we are when we're not diminished. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Us in the fullness of our power, not much better. Not that much, but yeah, not that much better. The words are in a better order, but it doesn't mean that they're better words. Syntax. Ooh, new the it sounds like a Spider-Man villain from 1992. It, oh man, he rearranges Spider-Man's words to make him confess on cr- to crimes. Ooh, that'd be great. That that's a that's a great idea. That's like um what is it? The Onomatopoeia character or whatever that's called. It's getting a little we're getting a little Grant Morrison, aren't we? Yeah. But in a good way. The Doom Patrol. Grant Morrison Spider-Man would be interesting. I didn't he'll never do it, but I don't mm, I'd read it. I don't know if it would work. I think I think Pete needs to stay grounded a little more than the, that would get. <clears throat> what I would like is to have grounded Pete have to react to that shit. That's where the, the gold would come from for me. Okay. Because like Grant Morrison's always making Superman see shit like that, but Superman sees everything. Yeah. Or Batman. You know, like that or bat. Yeah. Batman's also seen it all. He's been in the justice league. He fought Starro. Like, you know, Peter, Peter Parker has not seen that shit. So Peter Parker gets a guy who's like, Oh, I can say a concept and it comes to life. You know, like that would be really put him out of his element. I think there'd be something fun there. I do think of uh, all the time about the Doom Patrol villain uh, who can have any power no one's ever thought of. Yes. That's so fucking good. I love it. That's yeah, great. I've got DC, uh, the, the comics app thing. So I've uh, got Doom Patrol saved. I haven't started rereading it yet, but Shut. we got through the uh, Grant Morrison uh, Batman for the first time completely. Oh, what do you think of it? Enjoyed it. I like it. It's really good. I never read the, the um, Batman Inc. stuff, but I read everything up through that. Yeah. I haven't read that either. 
Um, that's still on the list. Like it's saved. I, I basically just saved everything Grant Morrison did so I can, you know, cut sure. through the stuff that doesn't require lore that I don't want to learn. Um, yeah, I like it. It's really good. Uh, I, I, it's, I, it's a, the, probably the longest Batman run that I like. There are other Batman runs I also like, mm-hmm. uh, that I've read, but it's probably the longest sustained Batman. Yeah. I, I am a big fan of specifically the Grant Morrison, the H H grunt. The the Batman mm-hmm. Batman thinks this is funny, but in like a painful way kind of sound. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, yeah. It's it's a weirdly I in my mind I remembered it being less kind of funny than it was. It's pretty funny. It it's funny. Yeah, it's a funny comic. His like, version of the Joker is quite funny, despite being one of the darker versions of the character. Yeah, it's 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 really good. It's very good. Yeah. So, anywho, anywho, <laughs> this has been, just, this has been, this been days, days of, of future yeah. cast. And Days of Future Bats. I was going to say that, Gary, but I was too busy giggling in our first joke. Yeah. Yeah, we're good. It's trinket time. We're, we're good friends. It's time to cuddle. Let's get two babies it's- in the crib and just put a mobile there and let them watch that. Gary, we already did the weird baby play thing. Can you imagine how big the crib would have to be? It'd be fairly large. Can we just get a king size crib? <laughs> Excuse me. For two podcasters? Hi, uh, you're the the woodworking guy that we hired from Craigslist. Uh, <laughs> I know we said we needed a... Um, a tree house or some shit. We need an adult crib for two big babies. I'm going to need 40 men, 20 days, and an entire forest. I'm running the math. I don't think I don't think 40 men in 20 days could cut down an entire forest, Gary. With machines? What about I if they had that big goblin machines. thing from Warcraft 3? Oh my god. They airdrop in the goblin from the Warcraft Three. They airdrop uh, Fred in the Schneider, goblin. and you can listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> they came from behind. Uh, <laughs> stop, uh, for, poking stop poking me! Stop poking me! Zug 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 zug. And Kate Pearson's beautiful voice comes in. Sure. Zug zug. <laughs> yeah. We're just making sounds now. No, no, Gary. Uh, no, there's a very specific concept here. We're saying Warcraft things in the Fred Schneider voice. In the B52 Warcraft, it, uh, but we haven't come up with a good pun name for that, even though it seems like it should be right there, right? Yeah, uh, kind of. Yeah, yeah, it does. Oh man, I <clears throat> we're of course uh, talking about Cursed Penny. It's because it's trinket time. It's trinket time. God damn it! Sunday, Monday, trinket days. Trinket. Days, Trinket. Days. <laughs> I can't not do it. <laughs> Especially now. Don't expect me to have fortuity now. I, I, I thought maybe your courtesy, uh, your engines would be powered down enough that I could get through it. But the, no, my courtesy engines would stop me from doing it. Okay. My courtesy engines are very powered down. Gary, how many um, different episodes of Inspector Gadget do you think uh, involved Mummy's Curses? Ooh, good question. Two? I, I'm i really torn between one and two. I, I think, because yeah. that show ran for a couple seasons, I think like around season five, you go, we could do another, we could do another one, right? That's why I said two, is like the mummy and then like the mummy's revenge. Okay, you yeah. You know, like, like he, a, he comes back. Oh, maybe it's a crossover with mummies alive. Ooh, I, I think that they, they took place over different periods, man. Mummy's Live was like mid nineties. Oh, yeah, Gary Gadget is a late eighties show. You know what, Gary? I really thought I could get I could the Mummy's Alive reference would carry me into the joke, but you're right, no. Gary. That was uh, anachronistic and ahistorical, and <laughs> yeah. I deserve everything I'm getting right now. I deserve the yeah. drubbing I'm getting from you right now. We are abusing me next time verbally. Yeah. Next time you're going to be like, oh, why wasn't there a crossover between the Gummy, Berry, Gummy Bears cartoon and, uh, you know, Beetleborgs? They're like six years apart. Yeah. Who's your favorite of the Gummy Bears? Ooh, um, probably the fat grumpy one. Oh, well, now, Gary, there was a, f- a big fat one and yep. then there was a, a grouchy one. I'm talking about the grouchy. I mean, maybe it was supposed to be muscular for a gummy bear. I think so. I think he's, he's just really to... stout. Yeah, he's kind of like yeah. bulldog built. That's Gruffy. Yes. I think. Yeah, Gruffy is my favorite. The large one, I think, is just named Tummy. There's Tummy. Yeah, Tummy was not my favorite. It's fun to uh, try to think about the gummy bears. Like, you know, before bed, me and Liv will talk, 
And Weird. one of the, th- you know, every, every once in a while, I was just like, hey, who did the gummy bears fight? Uh, Duke, you know, and it's real fun to try to remember stuff like that. That would be Duke Igthorn. I know that now because I did a wiki dive. And I knew that now because but, I've never forgotten it. Yeah, because you, uh, you know, you've read up on it. Uh, Your gummy bears literate. Also, well, no, no, Gary, this is just a memory from childhood. I've never forgotten that Duke oh. Igthorn is the, the villain of gummy bears. It comes up enough in my brain. Mostly because I will, every once in a while, bust out an okie dokie dookie. <laughs> it is, uh, where do you put gummy bears on the Disney Afternoon cartoons? I don't, really. Because uh, it wasn't launched with that uh, that block. Uh, like, DuckTales, I don't think it ever officially ran as part of the Disney Afternoon. It was part of the Saturday morning cartoons that ran on ABC. It, it was certainly part of the uh, Disney Afternoon. I know that. Maybe it got so- repurposed into... Like, that? it might have gotten melted into it at some point, but they did run as part of the same block. Maybe, hmm, I think that might be a, a DeKalb thing. It, it might have been, yeah, it might have been on our, our affiliate or what have you, but I remember Disney Afternoon uh, having gummy bears. Here's the broadcast section. So, because ABC had a Disney block uh, that had Winnie the Pooh, uh, it had, uh, yeah, it was the the gummy bears Winnie the Pooh hour. In fact, Uh, the adventures of gummy bears does show up on the Disney afternoon wiki. Interesting. I feel like that has to be a repackaging of exist. Oh, you're right. Uh, It was rerun on the Disney afternoon through the summer of 1991. Yeah, it was the only time I saw it. So I'm not saying that this I'm not claiming any authority. It's just where this is my gummy bears. Uh, But yeah, uh, as opposed to uh, the Disney afternoon was originally launched, I think, with DuckTales and Darkwing Duck as the Mm -hmm. original uh, kind of the. Yeah, probably. Uh, if I'm ranking it there, it's a, it's sub Darkwing Duck. Yeah, wait, uh, Darkwing Duck's great. Darkwing Duck. Is uh, so- I think Darkwing Ducks might secretly stand up if I were to watch that. I think it's probably pretty uh, funny. No. You got launch pad. Yeah. Well, it's making fun of Batman. Like, there are probably Goslin. like cliche things that I didn't recognize at the time. You guys, dumb you neighbor know, like, friend. Yeah. Um, I'm forever an anti Tailspin guy. I think Tailspin is my least favorite of the Disney afternoons. Tailspin's great man, you're insane. Out of your goddamn mind. Which one do you think is worse? Between those? Uh, oh, oh. I mean, all of them. Oh, um, Bonkers. I forgot about Bonkers. bonkers Y'all sucks. forgot about Bonkers. <laughs> I did forget about Bonkers. Bonkers sucks. I just mean my Disney afternoon oh. also. Which yeah, isn't sorry. Objective, I but forgot that I'm... Just, well, I can only talk about shows I saw, I've seen. I'm walking through so an I... invisible labyrinth made of Gary's mind. <laughs> you are 100% doing that because I have never seen Bonkers because I, I was uh, scoring puss. By that point, I was no longer watching the Disney Afternoon. <laughs> Aladdin, more like I'm gladden to be having intercourse. <laughs> more like a Leia, a Glandon. A Leiden? More like a uh, Labian. Um, the, uh, we're talking about Cursed Penny here, which I haven't gotten because you have to beat uh, Mother with Tainted Keeper. Yeah. And I haven't done enough with regular keeper on my switch save. So do uh, what this does is when you pick up a coin, it teleports Isaac to a random room. So this yes. is uh, on the surface. This is just bad. I can see a way to make this somewhat useful. It, yeah, you'd have to. What you would do is you would uh, drop this in the first floor of the room, basically. Or first, yeah, flo- first room clear, the, the, floor, clear the room. Clear the, floor. Uh, clear the floor, then pick up the pennies and hope you get sent to secret rooms and then maybe uh, or, air rooms. Or save a key to get into the shop and treasure rooms because yeah. you, you tend to generate, what, 10, 15 coins, whatever, as you run through a yeah. floor? A lot of rolls on the potential teleportation. Which is good. Uh, it also has a weird synergy with Tainted Keeper where uh, the coin, you know, sends enemies drop coins when, oh, uh, when he yeah, dies. Yeah, Carrie, this makes me want to die reading this. Yeah, uh, collecting coins dropped from enemies will teleport the Tainted Keeper, uh, resetting the room the coins were in. With enough patience, this allowed the Tainted Keeper to collect essentially an infinite amount of coins at a rate of roughly one coin per room. How's your uh, day going? It, yeah, that's depressing. How, how's your Tuesday? Your whole Tuesday. Yeah. yeah. And and just so not in the spirit of Tainted, Care- Tainted Keeper, which they spent a lot of work making him fun. Uh-huh. You know, like Tainted Keeper is a more like you can make arguments about regular Keeper being fun. That's fine, but they made Tainted Keeper more powerful and a little bit more like Zazz. Yeah, a little bit. You know? of, yeah, always constantly carving tally marks into his own flesh. Yeah, yeah, like Zazz, <laughs> like uh, you know, like like uh, the Darkwing Duck parody enemy of Zazz, 
who's constantly uh, carving tally marks into his beak. Yeah. Um, Gary, I appreciate that you said it with confidence. I, that's the uh, that was what I was going for. Yeah. Um. Yeah. The. But Gary, uh, let's think about it seriously. What would be okay. the the Darkwing Duck parody of Zaz? So, so in case you're not clear, Victor Zaz is a minor Batman villain. He's a he's a pretty bad Batman villain. Yes. Uh, Batman villains tend to be pretty fun and have a concept. Mm-hmm. This guy is just a real twisted psycho. Yeah. Who kills people? He's real post seven. Uh, yeah. So he, oh, yeah. He's a serial killer, and then when he kills someone, he carves a tally mark into his flesh. Uh, he's yeah. Like I think in multiple versions and multiple setup or uh, blah. It, in it's the Arkham games, he gets the, used as like the intro villain, the tutorial boss. Yeah. Yeah. He. It's based on the Harry Belafonte song, uh, except instead of uh, tally me banana, he t- does tally marks. Tally me a murder. When he kills someone. Yes. Tally me a murder. Um, <laughs> oh. Wait, am I am I completing two fucking songs? That is uh no, that's the same song. Is yeah, Deo is yeah, is, yeah. The other one is uh rocking a line. Or okay. whatever. Jump in the line. Rock your body uh, in time. Okay. I believe you. I believe you. Uh what a great song. Um And what a beautiful the, message. Uh, it's so weird that at the end of that movie, they're like, Did you go good? job on your your test and she's like yeah and because she did a good job they let her uh dance like summon a bunch of football player ghosts to dance with her well they, she also gets the weird fly. reward she gets to fly yeah, well, kind of, yeah for like a minute yeah yeah i, I just don't know why they're so withholding why they don't just like give her powers all the time uh, i feel like that you would know? probably get irritating when she wanted them to for them or for lydia for for them to be constantly like they're, they're what else are they doing they're parenting her yeah, because her parents have like basically ceded all control <laughs> of her check life. Out. It's, completely it's checked like ghost out. Ghost nannies. Yeah, like they basically have decided they're just reading books. Also, you don't want to sculpting. See, you don't want to see what her dad's been looking up on the computer. No, 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 no. He, the the uh, that's the a deets. joke about Jeffrey Jones, who's mm-hmm. a registered they had sex to put offender him in the- now. They had to put him in the Deadwood movie because it'd be weird if they didn't, but they only give him one line and then he walks out the frame. Yeah. Um, the, like, his, his appearance of that, I watched that whole movie and be like, so are they going to use him? And he comes up and he's like, I don't know. And then he leaves and that's it. It's very funny. Um, I, I don't think it'd be that annoying uh, to help somebody fly if there's a ghost. I'd be very generous with my ghost powers. I think they're just trying to, I, I, I don't think it, I, I, I rescind. I don't think it's cause it'd be annoying for them. I think it would mostly, unless it like drains, they're trying to be good parents. Yeah. Unless it like drains years of un- like it brings them a little yeah. closer to going into the, to that room. Yeah. That room. Death for the dead. Yeah. The lost souls room. Yeah. Yeah. If it, and then I would never do it. If, if it, it like, it literally was going to mean, mean, well, make me die. You know, that's what being a parent is Gary. You, you you are really draining yourself Gary, in order I to make your kids live a little bit longer. Teacher, uh, okay. which is essentially what this is, but with ghost powers. Yeah, absolutely. I will watch it. So, Gary, yeah. we can't end the episode until we figure out what the Darkwing Duck <laughs> parody of oh Zaz shit Zaz. Yeah. Um. So, some kind of uh, serial killing duck. I you know? Gary, I want you, Gary. I want you to apply the Gary <laughs> Butterfield method to this and really take this seriously. A version of Zaz we could get into the Darkwing Duck cartoon. Okay, so nobody, none of Darkwing Duck's enemies killed people. They caused Steel uh, beak might. problems. Steel beak might. Steel beak might, but it, it's they never. It was off never explicit. Camera, off camera. Like mostly, it was like, oh, the Electro Duck like does shorts out the power supply. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're doing things that inconvenience the city. Yeah. So I'm trying to think of what the serial killer equivalent of inconveniencing a city is. What if he's a prankster who draws on himself with a marker every time he does, like, maybe it's a specific prank. Like maybe he's like, I think there's, there's yeah. already a uh, quacker Jack who like has, a I was going to say, yeah. yeah, it's already the prank thing is already, but it wouldn't be like a we, prank. We get rid of prank. He does something, uh, that inconveniences the city, you know, that's a minor crime. And every time he does, he, Draws a little mark on himself. Yeah, I'm trying to think. keep track of it in it Magic be Marker. like flushing all the toilets at once because that's that's clearly in the liquidator's uh, wheelhouse. Yeah, it puts a firecracker in a toilet. I feel maybe? like that would cause conflict with the liquidator. Yeah. Well, they could team up. They could. Um, I just now that I'm thinking about it, I feel like most of like you know the the Darkwing Ducks Rogues Gallery really covers almost everything you'd want to do already. Yeah, it's a it's a really robust. 
pantheon. It's a really rich tapestry of characters. Yeah, it's it's lovely. Um, Gary, do you think it's weird that they uh, introduced the idea of a character called Negaduck by splitting Darkwing Duck into good and evil halves? And then they're like, wait, we like having an evil Darkwing Duck. So then they just brought in another character also named Negaduck. Yeah. It's fucking weird. I, I also don't like saying Negaduck because it sounds too slur adjacent. Okay, sure. What about uh, Taurus um, Bulba, the villain from the original, uh, from the from the pilot movie? I do like saying Taurus Bulba. Yeah, it's a fun reference to, I think, Russian literature. No. Uh, what would be a thing he would do? Um, I mean, it could be anything, right? Like, he steals gems. That's... Like, it would just have to be something that doesn't hurt people. Okay. it's. I don't know. I feel like, I feel like we have to get it back into the prank space, though. Because that's like, because serial killing is just an evolved form of pranking. It's a pretty intense prank. It's a very, it a it's a very intense prank. It's why Seven was so fun to watch. Mm. I mean, Seven, like, what's this Joker going to do next? Yeah, Seven is just a fictionalized jackass film. Yeah, it's very similar. The uh, Well, there's also all the extra sins that ended up in the deleted scenes. <laughs> they do like the diarrhea cannon, mm-hmm. um, you know, the, the, the marshmallow uh, balls off, you know, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. And so I went to your home and cut off Bam Margera's pretty little head. Yeah. <laughs> I cut off Bam Margera's father's dick and Bam Margera just laughed and pointed the entire time. <laughs> and everyone just like, kind of, damn it. <laughs> damn it, Bam. Oh, geez. What are you damn doing, it, Bam? Bam? Bam, I was using that to urinate and potentially to fuck right. your mother later. Oh, Bam, Bam. Why'd you do it? <laughs> Take that, dad. I'm Bam Margera. Uh, reminder: We're recording this mm-hmm. on December nineteenth. If Bam Margera is dead at present, we don't we rescind. Dead Margera, <laughs> Bam Margera. Gary, I don't think they're going to change his name to Dead Margera if he dies. I think if they did that, I would no longer have to wonder whether people were dead. That's a really which good. is what I have to do now. Would we try you know? to portmanteau the names, or just put them, just change out the first name, or just change them? the first name to Dead? Yeah, one's easier. One require one creates jobs though. Would her name be Dead the Second? Ooh, yeah, yeah. Queen Dead the Second. I like where this is going. Yeah, I like where this is going. Kind of tricky though, because uh, gonna be a lot of Queen and King Deads the Second or Third. I would love, uh, you know, going my my this creates this is a job creation sure. joke. Sure, Gary loves a comedy. It it'd be a great joke for you, or a great job for you. For me. Yeah, like coming up with portmanteau, like death names. It's like a fucking sick burn, man. No, it's it's intended to be. I think you'd be really good at it. Yeah, I know. The, I think the you'd sincerity make funny with which you're saying it in only increases <laughs> is the, the sick burn of the insult. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm a I'm a, a loaded gun in the hands of a child, and that's what happiness is. Gary, uh, yep. if people enjoy this show ending for the week, what should they do? Boy, uh, I'll do it. I'm going to go to Patreon. <laughs> Enjoy the show ending for the week. Yeah. I'm going to go to patreon.com slash duckfeedtv yeah. and give myself some money. I'll just give Patreon a little tip yeah. by giving laundering some of my own money through them. Uh, and then uh, they can leave a rating review on Apple Podcasts or Podcast Addict. Uh, like this one from uh, DNL to the BPE. Please listen to my podcast, Everything to Guppy. Five stars. I think nice. that's also a repeat. I think people are just repeating stuff for the holidays. I, I, you know, it's quite all right. It's the gift that, that gives again. Uh, it's like uh, NBC said uh, that one summer where they just ran reruns of their must-see TV block. If you haven't seen it, it's new to you. Yeah. <laughs> that was an ad campaign. Sad that was a little... real fucking ad campaign. Yeah. It, it reminds me of the Domino's one. They're like, we're better now. Yeah. You know, and like, hey. it's really sad, like honest. We should run that. We should run that campaign. Hey, we know. That's what we should we do know. next week. It's like, hey, we know. Yeah, we listened. To, we we listened to last week too. We know it's going to be two weeks before we record again too. So we're going to have a lot of time to reflect on our sin. And Gary, I'm uh, on vacation. You're going to get for the only time in the year unstressed. Will? Oh my god! I'm going to be do relaxed. I, I'm what do be I do? Healthy. I'm not going to be. Do funny. I sleep on you like you're a Snorlax? I uh, like. Yeah, Gary, come on over and sleep on me like I'm a Snorlax. Do I put on my diaper and sleep on you like you're Snorlax? Maybe put on a big, big, very absorbent diaper. Like a comfy diaper. Yeah, like a comfy, very absorbent diaper. And come yeah. sleep on me. And like then a binky? A, and it's got a, and the binky should also be somewhat absorbent. Yeah, because I'm going to go. Brr, 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 brr.